The following is a Stars and Strikes doubles rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. and strikes doubles. From Park Place Lanes and Gwenda, featuring outstanding Campbell pin bowlers from all over New England. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Campbell pin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham. Glad you could join us for our second hour here on The Win. Stars and Strikes doubles once again as we move on in week two. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And last week, Dan, uh, here on The Double Show, uh, we saw a very uh, effective team, Dan Broder and Larry Valcourt. Brought their strike ball with them, and they threw a lot of strikes. And really, the difference in that match was the first game. They got out to a big lead, and, and they just coasted the rest of the way. All right, today they go for their second win in a row, and let's meet both of the teams now. First, our number five seeded team coming back from last week, trying to make it two wins in a row from Bow, New Hampshire, Dan Broder, and his partner from Newport, Larry Valcourt. Just missing the 400 triple last week at 399. Danny Broder averaging 120, 676 for roll-off score. Larry Valcourt comes in averaging 124 and 663. And last week, uh, having knocked off the team of Jack Sanek and Ron Willett, uh, Dan and Larry will try and make it two wins in a row. And, uh, of course, uh, trying to do what proves to be nearly the impossible, coming up from uh, lower in the bracket to try and come up and win a series championship. Today they'll try and take that second step as they face our number three seeded team from Bradford, Massachusetts, Mike Sargent, and his partner from Windsor, Vermont, Stan Mayo. Okay, and uh, Mike Sargent, uh, his roll-off score was 694, Stan Mayo 654. So we got a mix there of a, a veteran with a newcomer to the show. All right, of course, the winners will move on into our semifinal match next week, and uh, the runners-up will go home with fourth place prize money, $200, and we will tell you more about that and more about the Tournament of Champions, which is just now three weeks away here on the wins. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later on. We've got three strings of candle pin bowling, men's doubles coming up here on Stars and Strikes. We'll get it started in a minute. Don't go away. Well, after a match last week in which they threw 15 marks, including eight strikes, as Dan mentioned, a 399 total, Dan Broder and Larry Valcourt move up the ladder. They beat Jack Sanek and Ron Willett last week, so they take on a number three-seeded team, Mike Sargent and Stan Mayo today. Next week, Mark Gregory and Dan Valcourt will be here, Larry's brother, and in two weeks, the number one-seeded team, Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney, ready to go to try and defend that number one spot. But in the meantime... Lots of bowling to come, and Dan Broder, who got his team off to such a great start in last week's match, will start again this week. As a matter of fact, he was two pins better last week than he is right now. He <laughs> threw a strike the first ball. Leaves the one and the three. Yep, he's right on the spear, though. And the fill is five, leaving the four horsemen plus the nine. Looks Watch out. Good. Oh, he's got it. Must have it. No. <laughs> the Woods actually stood that pin up by curling around. Looked like he deserved to make it, though. That's the idea. 25 opening pair for Dan Broder. And that brings us to Mike Sargent. Mike's last visit with us was back in January on the mixed doubles. He was on the number one seeded team with Vi Byron, but they wound up losing the series championship match to John Maffio and Louise Hamilton. And Mike Sargent starts with a spare in the first. Oh, oh, Mike pulled that up. one. Yep. Yeah, he dropped that ball and got just two on the spare. There's a recovery. Nice bid, nice bid. This may not be over yet. Let's see. Nope, that would 
toward the channel will block it. There was a piece of wood heading for the 10 pin, but it never got there. And it'll be a 10 for Mike. So a 22 opening pair, kind of an unusual uh, score for the opening two boxes. Now Larry Valcourt. And Larry, who last week made a specialty of kind of just missing the head pin, a head pin well enough to get some backdoor action, uh, starts out again with a little break, leaving the one and the eight, or rather the one and the nine. Ooh, and he's got it for the spare. Off, off the wall. He hit it thin, thought maybe the ball would carry through, but the head pin comes off the wall. Actually, it was another piece of wood that came off the wall. But it's another mark. Two out of three boxes now. Two spares for the team of Broder and Valcourt. Wow. Even when Larry throws a spread eagle, it looks good. <laughs> uh, he's just right on the head pin. And ball looks like it's about a foot in diameter when he does it. The final roll off for this double series by the way was held at the bowl away in Rochester. Say thanks to uh, Royal Edgerly and his crew up there for handling all the logistics for us. Well we I have a lot of fun with Royal and <laughs> and his son Jeff, and I won't even mention that they didn't get the addresses and phone numbers for the bowlers. <laughs> and, and you know that we're searching all around for the bowlers, Doug, but I won't mention that. Well, they know that we have these vast files. Yes, you know. that's right. I mean, they're, they're rookies at that, right? They just... <laughs> <laughs> and Stan Mayo making his first appearance here on Stars and Strikes. Puts up a spare in his very first frame. It was funny, because Royal called me. He says, what's the matter with your fax machine? I want to fax you the names. I says, nothing. He said, I'll fax you over the names. I said, okay, it'll probably take a while because you are got to give me the phone numbers and the address. Oh, I forgot to get those. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had a little fun with that, but we managed to, or you managed to get a hold of all the bowlers, Doug. So. Well, I told one of the bowlers that uh, in my spare time, I'm a private detective. <laughs> so honing my skills. Well, the toughest one was Stan because we were searching New Hampshire and he's in Vermont. <laughs> That's right. Stan uh, makes history today, becoming the first uh, bowler from the state of Vermont to qualify for the program. Windsor, Vermont is where he makes his home, and he put up a spare in his first box. Didn't get the fill he would have liked. Actually, Dan, we've had four marks already, and the fills have not been what you would expect. Total of 15 pins on the... Uh, no, that's a lob. Well, several of the bowlers had problems with lobs last week, and Dan throws one here. So this will be his second ball in the fifth. And this will be a spare if he takes them all. Oh, so much for that lob bothering him. Come right back, and you know, Dan doesn't lob usually. And if he does, it's a rarity. He lays the ball right down. Ten bucks. Somebody who has a tendency to put it out near that lob line each and every ball and they get called on lob, it's going to affect them a lot more because they know they're close anyways. But Joe, again this week, is sitting on the edge of his seat. <laughs> Watching intently that lob line. Three and the five left for Dan. Couple pieces of wood. Come up high in that piece of wood in the front. Drive it back. Ooh, he's going way low. Whoa. Oh, got Too far. Away. And we're going to have to have that piece of wood checked, I believe. It's out. It may actually roll off, but it's not going to be a factor in the shot anyway, I don't believe. It's settled on the left side of the lane, and it is in play, says Joe Paglia. But Dan will have a clear shot at the five pin. And takes it. But two open frames for Mike Sargent to work on. And a little different start this week for Dan Broder and Larry Velcourt. Last week's opening game, 155. Oh, that's a big strike for Mike Sargent. Well, that's the third mark in a row on lane 32 for the team of Sargent and Mayo, and this was a big one. It's Mike Sargent and myself, we go back many, many years in this game of Candlepin bowling, and I was, let's watch this almost a double. Wants one of them to go, the seven pins rocking. 
Now he wants everything to stay. <laughs> I was kidding Mike before the show. I says, Mike, you, you should get up and warm up now. You know, when you get our age, you need that little extra time. And never one to put one over on Mike Sargent. He says, I already threw 10 games on the other side. <laughs> nice spare, the conversion on the strike for Mike a, Sargent. He was a little high in the wood, but he got a lucky break coming across for the seven pin, and he's all smiles. He knows he got a break on that one. But he able to take over the lead with that, Mark. Oh, Larry Valcourt. No, oh, and Larry is going to have to shoot at the 4-7, 6-10 with no usable wood. Pick a pair, see if you can get it moving. And a nine. Last week in their win, Larry Valcourt and Dan Broder had only four spares until the third game. But they were throwing so many strikes that it didn't really hurt them that much. Normally when, we've talked about this before, when a, a bowler or a team is throwing more strikes than spares, that's usually an indicator that things aren't really going well. That's right. But uh, last week, that wasn't the case. Tried to convert the half Worcester. Again, three weeks from today here on the Winds, the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions series begin. Remember, two tournaments of champions this year. The fourth annual in the singles competition starting at 12 noon, three weeks from today, April 19th. Paul Berger is our number one seed in the singles tournament. And then starting at one o'clock on April 19th, It'll be the doubles tournament of champions, the first of five weeks. And as of right now, the team of Gary Carrington and Jack Ray are the number one seed for the doubles event at 448. But that may be topped, you never know. Two weeks from today in the championship match of this series. We'll have to wait and see. Stan Mayo can't convert the spare, but he does get the 10. Gave it a good run though, got that wood moving. But it increases the lead to 17 now the team of Sargent and Mayo. This tournament champions will mark the end of our ninth season, eighth seed. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Just seems like nine, right? <laughs> oh, what an effort, what an effort. Actually, the wood killed that shot, prevented him from flipping the two pin over into the six and 10. Got just the six pin, left the 10. Stan waiting to make sure the wood was in place and takes the nine anyway. But his team, Mayo and Sargent, leading by 17 to this point. Dan Broder now. A little thin on the head pin, but look at the action he's getting. Leaves the seven pin. It's not what you call a solid nine pin drop. <laughs> <laughs> the ball looked a little better going in, I thought, but it just took time. It's not that explosive strikes or nine pin drops that he was throwing last week. The difference a week makes. In our case, a few hours, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big ball, there's the strike. That's that could have been a 7-10 split. But they both yep. kicked out. Here's the replay. Watch. You see eight of them go out in a hurry. Seven, ten. They're all, they're all moving at the same time, though. That's a big final two games, uh, two frames for Dan Broder. Team was trailing by 17. And a double. Wow. Boy, he did the same thing last week in the first game. He threw a double strike and a spare on top for 45 pins in the last two boxes. And that's what gave the team the lead that they would never relinquish. And I'm not sure I'm not about sure that either. one. I was blocked out. Yeah, I couldn't see it either. We may have to check the replay of that one and see if that was on the lane or not. We'll, uh, we'll no. mark it up there as a spare. No, Danny says no. Okay. Danny says no. So it was a nine. 
So it'll be 123 for Broder and Valcourt, but still 39 pins in the last two boxes for Dan Broder, salvaging that string a little bit. Mike Sargent will have to put a mark up now to retain the lead. That was a classy move by Danny Broder, because I was blocked out in his approach. He blocked me out yeah, too. As and, I was, yeah. And uh, once he knew we were questioning, he turned right around and said, no, it was, it was no good. Now, he explained that rule, because most people s continually think that the ball has to hit the gutter before it is no good, or the channel. Once the ball leaves the lane, in fact, it will never drop into the channel. If you throw any kind of a speed, it'll go right to the sidewall. As soon as it leaves the lane and has not touched a fair piece of wood, the ball is considered dead. And Danny uh, turned around and thought that ball would left the lane before it came in contact with the wood. So it was a nine. Mike Sargent looking for the mark that'll give him the lead, and he's got it. Anything more than a two, Phil. We'll give the team of Sargent and Mayo the lead after this first game. Five marks for the team in this first string. Maybe six. <laughs> no, he'll take a nine fill for a 130. And a seven pin lead for Sargent and Mayo. They're 130 against Broder and Valcourt, a 123. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on Stars and Strikes doubles. Well, these are the five teams we know we're going to see in the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. Gary Carrington, Jack Ray sitting up top of the 448. Mike Morrill, Jack Quinn at 412. Norm Bork, Ed Emerson at 387. At 381, Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. And at 373, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. One team is going to join those five teams. Could be one of these teams. They can win this match and then get hot in the next couple of weeks. Stan Mayo with his partner Mike Sargent leading this match by seven after game one. Stan Mayo mentioned making his first appearance here on Stars and Strikes and gets robbed of a spare there on the seven pin. Had a real good angle in between the three and the nine pins and I thought uh, when he threw the ball he had a real shot at making the spare, just missing Knocking the seven pin down. Stan works uh, as a machinist at split ball bearing, does a lot of his bowling at uh, the Sunset Lanes in Newport, so I would assume, although I didn't get a chance to ask him, that uh, Windsor, Vermont is right across the river there. Yes, it is. Over the border. And Stan right back in the pocket, leaving the five pin, and got to watch out now for that front wood. Well, you want to shoot the cap. If you miss the cap and clip the end of that wood, it could kick forward and get the five pin from behind. Wow. Or, or. <laughs> wow. That's what I thought uh, might possibly happen. I would have happen. never, ever played the cap on that, that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, Dan? Let's see what happened. Oh, boy, I thought he had that covered. Look well, at that. Well, the back wood wasn't frozen. Uh, or or it just it, the front piece pushed the wood straight back and yeah. didn't, didn't turn it at all. But to remove both pieces of wood and leave the five pin, that's a tough break. Oh. Is any consolation, Stan? Both of us would have had a nine box <laughs> or a ten box. Certainly wouldn't have had the spare because I would have tried to play the same way. But I probably would have missed it far enough to the right to make it. <laughs> well, Larry, still having trouble with that head pin with that first ball. And the second ball now. He's still got six pins remaining and one ball left. And a five. Well, this actually goes back to something we talked about earlier about getting more strikes than spares. This week, that's not the case for Dan Broder and Larry Valcourt. But often, the reason why, if you have more strikes than spares, that things aren't going your way is because you're not hitting the head pin consistently. You may be hitting them on the boxes where you're getting the strikes. Right but you might not be hitting it otherwise. And Larry has missed it twice here in these two boxes. Or you're missing a lot of spare opportunities that you have. One, two, nine, ten for Larry. 
Oh, nice. nice conversion Very. there. Very nicely done. I thought that Wood might have given him some trouble, but just throws the ball so hard, drove it right straight back, and it went uh, exceptionally fast. Mike Sargent right oh. back in the pocket and a strike. Five pin hung in as long as possible, but that was a nice looking ball. Can still throw him. He can throw them in bunches, too, up through the middle of that time for the spread eagle. Seven fill on the strike. Team of Sergeant and Mayo with a seven pin lead coming into this game. And now Dan Broder will step up working on a spare. Left by his partner. The losing team in this match will split fourth place prize money of $200. The winners, of course, will move on and face our number two seeded team, Mark Gregory and Dan Valcourt, next week. And that was a very strange looking ball that Dan threw. <laughs> he dropped that one right on the foul line, which uh, appeared to be uh, close to a lob, but he actually dropped the ball behind them foul line. And the thing that was strange about it was after it bounced, it had practically no spin on it at <laughs> all. It's like a knuckleball going down, but he got a good eight pin drop and get away with one little mistake there. Converts the spare, which was a seven and the eight pins. Nice set down that time and then gets a half Worcester. So that just goes to prove <laughs> that uh, how you put the ball down doesn't always tell the story. See what Dan does. Does it likes to go for the head pin and try to get a 10 or just grab the 4 7 in the corner? Well, he's going for them all. And settles for eight. So the lead goes up to nine here at the halfway point. The team of Sargent and Mayo just ahead at this point. But we've got a long way to go. Stars and Strikes doubles continues in a minute. Stan Mayo on the approach. And right in the pocket, but look at the lead. <laughs> well, maybe you can carry the ball off that piece of wood into the 10 pin. Wood certainly should take the five and the eight. Well, up and over it, or just behind it. Stan Mayo with the stand-up style as he approaches the foul line. Again, right in the pocket. Oof. This time leaves just the five pin, and there's a nice turn of the wood. Yes, you and I would have a shot at this one, Doug. I'd be nervous, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's Stan's second mark of the match. Marked in his first box up there, but that's his first one since then. The seventh for the team. And they lead. Larry Valcourt. Nice looking pocket hit, and the nine pin doesn't fall quite in the right direction to take the five. Shoot out a five pin with a, even a flatter piece of wood covering more of the lane across. Now, see, I did something that I never do that time. I had that one already down in my score sheet before he hit it. I'm gonna tell these boys. I get real nervous when I do that. Because <laughs> I know I shouldn't do that. You do crossword puzzles in ink too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just missing the head pin to the right. And gets a six, six pin drop. The one, seven, nine, and 10 pins left. Cuts the lead down to two, but they're opposite of Mark here in the sixth. And this would be a pretty good looking shot if it goes. Let's see. No. He's going to try and make that front piece of wood jump over. Almost. So the uh, mark in the sixth that 
Stan Mayo left there for Mike Sargent will keep their lead. It's at three plus the fill of six. Gonna split the two and the four if he can. Yeah. Oh, he does. Oh, did it pretty well. How did he miss the six pin? Couldn't have missed it by very much. Mike from Bradford, Mass. His wife Marianne have three children, uh, Mike Jr., Chris, and Kimberly. Mike works for Ogden Martin, does a lot of his bowling at the Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. And let's see if we can figure out exactly what happened on that shot. That one right behind the six. And, and again, when it came back off the wall. Right back in the pocket again, and the six pin is still there. Right in the face, right in the face. Right on it. Single pin pickup for Mike Sargent. Eighth mark for the team. Team of Broder and Valcourt have seven, and they trail by nine in the match. And pull that one a little bit. The one, three, four, seven, ten. Trying to split them. Ooh, everything but the seven. And the lead remains at nine, but now he's opposite a mark in the eighth. The presenting sponsor of Candlepin Stars and Strikes and Stars and Strikes doubles. Tri-State Megabucks, been great supporters of bowling here on the winds for the last several years, and I want to acknowledge their great support. As Dan Broder puts up the spare in the eighth, of course, uh, the marquee event of the year, except this year it's two marquee events <laughs> for Tri-State Megabucks, starting three weeks from today, April 19th, the Tournament of Champions, added prize money, singles and doubles. And you'll see some bowlers in both tournaments. I believe uh, Mike Morgan is in both. Missed by Stan Mayo, tough. Actually, right now, Mike Morgan is the only uh, bowler who's qualified for both. A couple of other guys have had chances to be in both. I, I was surprised when you said that. I said, oh, there must, there must be a few. I couldn't remember them, but we've had so many Close calls with bo bowls making both shows. I surprise there's only one. Well, it's indicative of the competition, really. It's just very difficult to get to that point. Just the eight pin left for Stan. Piece of wood out in front. Couple pieces of wood out in front. Make it three out in front. There it is. Three is enough. Oh, I thought that was eight. Eight was enough. <laughs> One seventeen. Pulled it a bit. One twenty one. Come on, Larry. And a two string total, two fifty one. Oh. First chore for Larry is to at least match the seven pin drop that Sergeant Mayo have already posted in the eighth. And then try to put a couple more marks up, possibly take the lead. Good looking ball, and he needs a break on the six pin, and he won't get it. Six and the seven are still rocking. Now, there is a piece of wood behind the six. Now, whether he can just clip the six pin on the right hand side and use that wood, I don't know. Let's see. I'm sure that's what he's going to try. Oh, wow. Move the wood in front of the seven pin. Looked like he hit it exactly where he had to hit it. Nine box. So the lead is still nine, and let's take a look at that spare chance. Hmm. Couldn't hit it much better. Oh, he's got to contend with a spare four. The lead is, uh, the Doug said, nine pins. 
And you have to come up with 14 to keep it at nine. Actually, if that wood is not in front of the seven pin on that last shot, and here's the same leave with different wood, if that piece of wood is not in front of the seven pin on that last shot, he probably makes it. You're right, you're right. Now this one I would say he's have to get the six pin clean to get the wood to roll over and get the seven pin when he's too high. So it's gonna be close, but Sergeant Mayo will maintain the lead. Boy, tight match, the six seven leave twice in a row. And he gave it a run both times. But instead, it's just 19 pins. So a six pin edge from this second game for Sergeant and Mayo added their previous lead. 251 to 238, a 13 pin advantage for Sergeant and Mayo with one game to go to see who gets into the semifinals. And we'll be back in a minute. And then there was one, one game remaining, 13 pin deficit facing teams of team of Dan Broder and Larry Valcourt trying to move one step closer to that tournament of champions. Dan just not seeming to get the carry this week that he was getting a week ago. That ball is a little lighter in the pocket. Usually that, that does well here at Park Place Lanes. Gets the pins moving. Nope. Dan's got a piece of wood coming out toward him, so Joe Paglia will go down to check it out. Dan's going to, meanwhile, take all this time <laughs> thinking about the 3 7 10, and he's going at it for just a 10 box. So, not the way he would have preferred to start this game. And he takes an eight box. Last week after two, Broder and Valcourt had 274. This week, 238. Oh! <laughs> pin slid right in behind the 10 pin. But that's what he's looking at. 10 pin all by itself. He's right on it. Spare in a second. Mark number nine for the team. And Dan, you were pointing out on the score sheet uh, something that's worth noting about that second game for Broder and Valcourt. Now we're looking at, oh, big strike by Mike Sargent. He just seems to trip that five pin out. Nine pin goes out, nine of the pins go out in a hurry, and something comes and nudges, nudges the five pin. Yeah, we were mentioned at the 115 for Valcourt and Broder at four marks in that 115. And of course, then you go right to the fills, and they had a two fill, but more important, they had a five box to start the game off with. So that kind of negates one of the other marks. Usually, you get four marks, you're a 120 plus, if you fill them halfway decent. That's the second time in the match that Mike Sargent has thrown a strike and then thrown a spread eagle on top of it. So Valcourt and Broder have lost two of the battles, but they're still in the war. <laughs> That's right. Opening game of 130 for Sergeant Mayo to 123 for Broder and Valcourt, 121 to 115 the second game. And he goes through the middle on the spare. That's on lane 32, and that means the team of Broder and Valcourt have lost two more pins, so the lead is now 15. Next week at 12 noon, semifinal week begins here on Stars and Strikes. Our singles match, Gary Carrington going for his second win in a row. He will face number two seed Neil Goslin. And of course at one o'clock here on Stars and Strikes doubles, the winners of this match will take on Mark Gregory and Dan Valcourt. And there goes the two pin and just the two pin. Right back with that one in what would have been the one-two pocket. So he's just to the left of the head pin. But it leaves the 5-8. 
be two open frames. 44 through four. And a chance for Stan Mayo to add to the lead here. It's at 15 right now. 15 pins, a two mark lead for Sergeant Mayo. So obviously, obviously a couple marks here would really put some pressure on. Four horsemen plus the nine and the 10 pins left for Stan. Well, some interesting wood. That was a lob. Oh, and he that loses. a lob. Loses four pins on that ball. So Broder and Valcourt are going to pick up ground here. Ooh, that's uh, a four box. Four box. Boy, a tough break there. So they gain six in count. Right, stand right back, though, and he'll shoot for a spare leave now. Trying to bounce back on the three and the six, and he's that's, got it. That's pretty good bowling right there. That is. Coming right. back after that tough lob, we will take a break. This match still very much in doubt. Nine pins, the difference right now for Broder and Valcourt. We'll return in a minute. Dan Broder. His team trailing. Got to mount some offense right now. Well, not only are they trailing, but they're in that position. They're the visitors in this match. Right. Uh, they're, they've got first at bat, so they know they got to put something up there. Either going to cap this wood or on the red line and hope the ball will come off the wall for the seven pin and the wood take the five. Very Not an easy shot. Very interesting wood position for the oh, five. Seven, nice he shot. Got it. Oh, Just right near the cap. That's a great shot by Danny Broder. Very unusual wood placement for that shot. Right on the cap and just enough to get the kick off the wall. Big mark. Mark number 10 for the team and a pretty good fill. Three, six, ten. Needless to say, this would be a big one. Especially because Mike Sargent will be coming up working on a mark on the other side of the score sheet. Oh, he was heavy on the three pin. Drove it straight back, left the 6'10". Like he skipped that one a little bit. Didn't take the regular flight the ball usually takes off the delivery of Dan Broder. And works out for 10. Well, he gets one mark up there, and you've got to figure you've got to get at least one. Mike Sargent now working on a very critical spare. Left by his partner. He'll fill it with seven. Of course, with the benefit of the lob for Broder and Valcourt, drop the lead to only nine pins. He'll increase that by seven, and he hits what we thought was another mark and leaves the seven pin. Well, now things will drop into the single numbers again. As the lead will be nine. It's like nine is the number. Today. Yeah, <laughs> every time we look, the lead is nine. Mike Sargent opposite just the 10 frame. Just clipping the head pin, and let's see how this turns out. The three, seven, nine, and 10 with wood everywhere. Well, this could be a big spare right here. No break on the seven pin. Had to wait. Everybody kind of held their breath to see what would <laughs> it was happen. Kind of silent here for <laughs> about ten seconds. And he matches the ten. So the lead is, of course, nine. Heading into the final rotation, each bowler with two boxes remaining, and Larry Valcourt will be first. Four boxes to decide this thing. And Larry is short to the right. Leaves the one, two, five, seven, nine. But there is a piece of wood nestled in the middle of all that, and that could be of great help here. Larry's really struggled the entire day, really. But he keeps fighting, trying to find it for one box anyway. He said, Put a mark up for his partner. He got that ball out there. Nine bucks. He's marks. Well, again, figure trailing by nine, you want to at least get one mark to force 
your opponent to mark to maintain the lead. And Larry yeah, that's a big ball mark. that time. How about that for a big mark? It's just all business up there. He just uh, if you looked on his face. He was all business and just trips the four pin. And like I said, he was struggling all day long, but he keeps fighting it. Eventually, you find the pocket. They had all, they had eight strikes last week. That's only their second today. And there's a spread eagle for Stan Mayo. It would be a bonus for their team if they could gain some in count with just the nine box that they've already have up in the seven. But it's not going to happen. He almost made that. <laughs> Whoa. That close to making the spread eagle. Made it almost look routine the way he threw that ball down there. <laughs> Here I'm looking uh, possibly for Broder and Valcourt to gain a pin or two in count, and they lose one. So the lead is now 10. But there is a strike up. And Stan will shoot at the four horsemen, no wood. <laughs> With a spare, no. I tell you, he's not getting cheated in any of his shots, though. He lets <laughs> that ball go. Every pin important. So the lead now has dropped to eight. So if Danny Broder could get eight on the strike, we'd be tied after eight completed frames. But he's thinking at least another mark, possibly two. Love to throw a strike here. They had a double strike last week in a very critical spot in the match. Not this time. He's got the four, five, seven. Now, Danny's thinking Phil on the strike right now. This is a difficult spare, but he would like to grab at least two. No, he's going to make it one, so we're absolutely tie after 30, uh, 28 boxes. And of course, that means the ninth box will be open, and Oops. Dan makes it an eight box, so now the tenth becomes all the more important because a mark would force Sergeant to mark in his final two. Real easy to do the math now. Yep. It's all even going to the final two boxes. Well, Dan has a shot at a spare here. The two, four, seven, nine. Well, I think he'd like the front piece of wood out of there, but it's not going to happen. The problem here, you hit it high enough to carry the nine pin, you might leave the seven. Oh, and it goes right by the nine pin. Well, Pushed it back. That was all he could do. Well, they're all important pins here. Mike would have to better these final two frames. 17, make it 18 pins, the final two frames. This is really sudden death right now, the way right. it's shaped up. Last two boxes all tied. So he needs 19 pins. 18 pins is a tie, 19 pins is a win. Missing the head pin. The one, two, nine, and 10. Now, what do you think here? Do you think try to make the shot, or do you think just? Oh, yeah, you're, you're shooting for a head pin. No, oh, there it is. He makes the shot. And that should do it right there for Mike Sargent. Whew. I guess you do think well, make the shot. <laughs> I'm sure Mike was thinking object pin, maybe a head pin. And oh, look at this. There it is. He threw his arms up. He knew that ball was in there. It's over. In a very stylish way for Mike Sargent in the final two boxes. As he goes spare strike. Ooh. And now the 1-9. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I didn't need any more, he said. <laughs> well, Mike can afford to smile now. And it'll be a five fill on the strike, maybe more. Let's see. No, it'll be a, no. oh, he hit the button. No, that's still five. He hit five. the button, so it is five. He hit the button, that immediately nullifies anything after that. But it didn't really matter. A 120 for the team of Sergeant and Mayo and a 17-pin win. But that's very deceiving. That's right. Because it went down to the final two boxes. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers right after this. Welcome back to Stars and Strikes Doubles. Uh, this time for Dan Broder and for Larry Valcourt, uh, the runner-up prize money, uh, fourth, prize, fourth prize money, $200. And uh, unlike last week, this week it just never got started. No, it was a good match to watch. Cat and mouse match all the way through, and 
The cats caught the mouse. <laughs> Where it, was, the mice? it was close all the way through. Uh, neither team really able to get an advantage. You guys kind of clawed back, and then it just came down to the final two boxes. Mike made a heck of a shot. Yeah, he, he, he did. He made a nice shot there in the, in the ninth box. Uh, if we had had a couple of breaks uh, earlier on in the match, it could have been a different story. But, you know, that's the way the pins fall. So now do you come back next week and root for your brother? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll be looking for you then as uh, Larry's brother Dan will be here with Mark Gregory. And, uh, again, congratulations to you guys, and we hope to see you uh, when our new season begins in the fall. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Dan Broder and Larry Valcourt. Appreciate it. And now let's uh, bring up Mike Sargent and Stan Mayo who uh, have one win in the books and will be uh, looking to try and make it two in a row next week. Stan, congratulations. Uh, first time here. Mike, not the first time for you, but, uh, but here's your new partner, and uh, things went pretty well for you. Well, good enough. <laughs> a couple breaks here or there could have been a little better. but Hopes to have a, uh, a partner, too, yeah. I guess, who's been on TV many times, especially going yeah, to that last two boxes. i confident though. in the last two boxes, right. him coming up. Mike, I, I'm sure you knew exactly what you wanted to do in, that last, uh, in those last two boxes, but I, what I want to know is were you, were you legitimately trying to throw f for the spare on that in that ninth box or were you just trying to make sure that you hit the front two pin no you're trying to make it that's all yeah. if i was trying to you know make sure of it i would have went inside mm -hmm. but uh, you can only know one way to go and that's yep. right after it yep. well it paid off and then the big strike mm -hmm. and uh and then of course you chopped out after that <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> i did that a lot over on that line <laughs> Well, Dan Valcourt and uh, Mark Gregory coming in. You'll be trying to make it two in a row. It should be a good one. We'll look forward to it. Thanks very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Stan and for Mike, a big win, and we'll uh, head over to the ladder and preview next week very briefly. Of course, uh, next Sunday at noon on uh, our singles program, we'll have Gary Carrington going for his second win in a row against Neil Gosselin. And then here on doubles, Dan Murphy, it'll be uh, Sergeant and Mayo against uh, Gregory and Dan Valcourt. Oh, uh, Mike's got to be pleased with that one because his partner, first time on, he won't have as many jitters as he had today and um, probably help him a lot more than he did today. Semifinal week next Sunday here on the Winds. It all begins at 12 noon. And then, of course, here on Stars and Strikes, doubles at 1. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lanes.